Welcome everyone to our midweek devotional and Bible study for the Hickory Knoll Church of Christ. We are glad that you are with us this evening. If you would like to turn your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, we will start there in a couple of moments. Uh, as you're turning there, let me say welcome. Uh, and uh, I know that uh, within the, the congregation over the last uh, seemingly not just days and weeks, but months, we have uh, been experiencing loss and and uh, we've all continued to grieve. And I know today was the uh, funeral services for Curtis Boudreaux. Please continue to uh, pray for the Middlebrook and uh, Lovett families. And also, of course, uh, we're still grieving the loss of our sister, Jimmy Crenshaw. Uh, and I know we have others on our hearts and minds uh, as uh, as well. And, and so for all of our folks who are on our uh, prayer list that you'll be receiving today, uh, let's uh, continue to be men and women of, of faith. In our society and in our world, and probably even uh, in our lives, we uh, we want to operate from. We tend to have this uh, desire to work from uh, positions of strength, right? Uh, certainly not weaknesses. Uh, we don't want to just go around and tell everyone all about our weaknesses. Uh, rather, we want to, uh, as necessary and when appropriate, uh, to uh, to operate from. Our strengths, for example, if you ever go in uh, for a job interview, I I'm sure you've you've put your resume together and, and you're not uh, highlighting on your resume all the things you've done wrong in your pre past jobs, right? You're emphasizing all the things that you've uh, done right. I mean, if there was ever a time that you failed a test or, or uh, certainly that's not going to be uh, on your uh, resume, rather though that maybe that cumulative GPA that represents uh, uh, years of, of good a hard, uh, hard study. Uh, we we all like to operate from positions of strength, not weaknesses. I, I'm excited to uh, I've got a new team that I'm coaching my son's uh, recreation baseball team, 13 and 14 year old, uh, for uh, St. Charles Parish, and I I'm excited about uh, coaching these fellas. Some of which I've been coaching since T-ball uh, in coach pitch, uh, and some of them this is their last uh, year of uh, recreation. Uh, baseball and, and and so I've got four players on the team that uh, are 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 good are, are decent and so uh, I'm I'm thinking about these four players and um, at any given point I'm going to be rotating those four between pitcher, catcher, shortstop, and first base. Now I've got some other fellows that are you know just about average, which is okay, and then I've got a couple of guys that that are still um, kind of first time playing. And and so uh, hopefully we can win some games and, and maybe even get a big enough lead to let these newer guys play in some of these more uh, important uh, positions, right? But um, as we get started, though, I, I want to operate from a position of strength and put my my best players in the, the spots in which there's going to be the most action. And, and as these other fellows grow, fellows grow and develop, hopefully they can uh, get into some of those uh, prime time uh, spots as well. But we all operate from uh, positions of strength and, and uh, we want to be able to know what we do well. And we want to be able to uh, capitalize on those strengths and not allow our weaknesses to uh, overtake us. Now, um, that all sounds fine and great <laughs> when it comes to getting a job and uh, when it comes to trying to maybe uh, do your best on the field, uh, but uh, in, in the classroom as well. Uh, but what about when it comes to our, our faith? Do we always need to operate from positions of strength to um, create this image that we don't have any weaknesses? Well, I'm not suggesting that we just go around and slum it and just uh, do the woe is me and uh, type thing. But an interesting passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 tonight, Paul is teaching us about the value 
of embracing our weaknesses, the value of understanding that uh, we may not have it all together all the time, but that's okay. In fact, as we embrace and understand our weaknesses, uh, we may uh, have a, a bigger positive uh, impact or it may have a bigger positive impact uh, as, um, as we'll see from our passage from uh, tonight. I'm in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning in verse number 7. Oh, this is what Paul writes. Unless I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches and needs and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. We all want rest in our lives. We all want joy in our lives. But Paul suggests here that that rest, that that joy may be further realized, may be further appreciated uh, in the context of weaknesses, in the context of approaches, infirmities, reproaches, needs, persecutions, and distress. Now, just by the very nature of what these things are, um, there's nothing uh, initially pleasant about them. I mean, how can you take pleasure in an infirmity if you're sick or if you have to go to the hospital? Or uh, how can you take pleasure in something that is stressing you out to a point that it's just overwhelming all of your thoughts and emotions? How, how can you find joy while you are being persecuted? I mean, that just initially sounds bizarre. It sounds, it sounds crazy. But there is a direct connection that Paul is making to our human experience and our spiritual experience. And what Paul is getting us to hopefully understand is that just because we experience these difficult times in life, it doesn't mean that we need to just, um, uh, just because we're experiencing all these difficult experiences in life, it doesn't mean that God is not there. And it doesn't mean that God doesn't love us. It may very well be an opportunity though, for us to grow in our faith to work through our weaknesses, to fight through that faith. We talked Sunday about being soldiers of Christ, uh, fighting the good fight of faith. It may be an opportunity uh, for us to, uh, to truly uh, embrace all that, that Christ has done uh, for us. Uh, I'm sure you've heard the, the question before, what, what, sh what should the church be? Uh, should the uh, church be this place uh, in which it's like a museum where everything is perfect and in its spot and every Christian's life is picture perfect. They're doing everything that they need and everything just looks uh, real, real good. Or is church a place uh, that um, we can not only celebrate and, and be happy as far as good times, uh, but to be there for each other uh, as well. So the question has been asked, uh, you know, should the church be like a museum for the perfect? Uh, or uh, is it a, a country club for the saints? Or is it a hospital for the sinners? And uh, hopefully uh, we understand that we are going to have weaknesses. Life is going to be tough. 
but that we have the Lord and we have each other. I, I, I am a big believer and in always giving your best. And, and um, uh, I'm, I'm sure that comes across uh, at times as a, uh, you know, a perfectionist. Uh, my mama will tell you that when I was in school, if I got a 99, uh, I was uh, not happy about the 99 questions I got right. I was upset about the one question I got wrong. And I, I know that's uh, <laughs> bizarre to some. Uh, but when we think about our lives, they're never going to be perfect. But Jesus is. And as we know in the book of Hebrews chapter 4, uh, he knows all about our weaknesses. And he can sympathize uh, with us. And um, he was perfect. And he was there uh, for us. But but notice what Paul is saying here. And he's, he's making this connection between, okay, our weaknesses and the Lord's strength. And uh, we don't know exactly what this thorn in the flesh was. Uh, some folks think maybe it was some type of um, like uh, physical, his vision, um, or uh, it may have been uh, some other type of mental duress or physical limitation uh, of some sort. But and he's praying hard and he's pleading with the Lord to uh, to uh, for this to be uh, taken away uh, from him. But eventually, he came to acceptance of the idea that when he is weak he is able to further see the strength of God I, I, I suppose our strengths may have it may create a temptation for us to become arrogant but certainly our weaknesses create an opportunity for us to stay humble and uh, again no matter what we're going through uh, in our lives, no matter how many infirmities, how many distresses, uh, how many persecutions, how many needs um, that we may be having, um, hopefully we can all find comfort in the fact that although we may be weak, our God, our Savior, He is uh, strong. And that's exactly what Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Verse number 10, for I am weak, then I am strong. So uh, maybe an action step for tonight, uh, looking for application. Uh, maybe get a piece of paper out or uh, get your uh, app out on your phone and, and make a list of your strengths. Make a list of everything that's going well for you right now. But then maybe make a list of, of things that uh, you may perceive as weaknesses. Uh, your own thorn in the flesh. Uh, your own distresses and infirmities and needs and, and persecutions. And, and as you uh, make that list, or make those two lists, uh, be thankful to God that he has blessed you. And, and, and for whatever it is you're thankful for, obviously, say thank you to the Lord. But whatever it is that um, is that thorn in the flesh for you, um, Allow those weaknesses to make your faith stronger uh, instead of tearing your faith apart. And I know that's easier said than done. But one of the awesome opportunities we have as Christians is to rely on the Lord and his strength when we are weak. In fact, uh, a lot of folks have often asked Christians, how in the world did you survive that? I don't understand. How in the world did you get through that? I don't understand. How did you not just let Satan win? How did you just, how did you stay in the church? How did you not lose your faith? Uh, I would have done this. I would have done that. And the answer is, it's not about us and what we've done, but it's about Christ and what he has done for us. He loved us. He died on the cross for us. He was buried and he was resurrected. And as he demonstrates life after death and the power over death, we have a, a greater hope. And no matter what kind of weakness or thorn in the flesh we have now, we know that one day we'll be with the Lord forever in heaven 
where there will be no thorns, there will be no weaknesses, but we will be able to be with the Lord forever. I hope this helps you tonight in your faith and in your journey. And we hope to see you Sunday morning at 9 o'clock at 2201 Hickory Avenue in Harahan. Take care and God bless.